What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. So I already did a video on how to go about speeding up uh, your feed rates and your speeds and that kind of stuff. And in that video, I had a lot of comments where people were asking how to change some of their parameters uh, for their gerbil settings. So that's what we're gonna go over in this video. And I'm just starting on this web page here and I'll put a link down in the description for this. This is from GitHub, and this has all of our parameters that we can change, um, and it's a really good description of what everything means. So, for example, uh, this 25, we can click on this here, and that'll give us a good explanation. That's our homing seek rate. And there's a ton of other good information on GitHub also, uh, not to get too off topic, but for example, here is an actual written description of our homing cycle steps and stuff like this is just really good for troubleshooting it's very hard to troubleshoot something if you don't understand how it's actually supposed to work so this walks you through the steps of you know z-axis will move up with a fast rate using parameter 25 uh, and you know it goes through everything that it uses for that so definitely get on this website check this stuff out and uh, there's a whole lot to learn on here so getting back to the actual tutorial, let's go ahead and open up Carbide Motion and we'll go ahead and turn our machine on. Click Connect to Cutter. And you don't have to initialize it to start making these adjustments, but we'll go ahead and do that at this time just because once you do start making them and you want to test stuff out, you're going to have to do it anyways. Let's jump over to the settings tab here and you've got this button down at the bottom show log we'll go ahead and click that and we'll just move this off to this side over here now we can go to MDI and the first thing we're gonna do is let's see what our settings that are in the machine right now are so we'll type dollar dollar and you can hit send or or click enter and now you'll see that we have this list of all the parameters that our machine is actually set to. So I went ahead and restored mine to the factory defaults, and this is for the HDZ. So if you're using a different Z axis, some of your numbers may look a little different here. And I actually have to make a change because I'm using the CNC for newbie Z slider. So the first thing that I'm gonna change is this 102 setting, which if we look here, that's the Z steps. And these uh, values here, I just wanna make sure that you guys understand, this is just a, a number that they threw in there that is not you know, a setting for anything to do with carbide motion or, or anything. Uh, these are just generic numbers that they put in. So let's go ahead and type dollar sign 102 equals and right now you can see here that the setting is 320. Well, that's not the correct steps for my axis. So I'm going to change that to 200. I'll click send. And then you get a little verification right here where you can see that it's sent OK. The more current versions of Carbide Motion have sped up quite a bit. Uh, some of this stuff used to be super slow. Uh, they've gotten quite a bit better, but I still think there's a little bit of performance that's left on the table. And what I recommend doing is just playing with these numbers yourself. Just go slow, make little adjustments, run the machine, see how it looks, see how it reacts to your change, and let that help you decide if you need to go a little faster or maybe you've gone too fast and need to start backing some stuff off. So a big one that I really like to change is this... Uh, number 25 which is our homing seek and they have that set at 2000 we're going to go ahead and turn that up to 4000 so again we say dollar 25 equals 4000 and i'll just click enter and again we get that
verification that it got sent. Now this is something that you have to be careful of. If you speed this up too much and you have actual mechanical limit switches, it has to touch those switches. So when it comes slamming into it, you could potentially damage them. If you have inductive proximity switches, like the ones that come up with the Z Plus or you've done your own upgrade, you can definitely go a lot faster here. Uh, I am still using the just regular factory limit switches, so I'm gonna keep this a little bit slower here. I originally started bumping it up to you know 6,000 and that was too much, 5,000 seemed too much. I got down to 4,000 and that was a number that I was comfortable with. So it's important just to keep in mind that it is nice to be able to speed everything up, but there will be limits. So now the next thing that I wanna change is this 110 and 111, and that's just our max rate. And that's the speed that it's going to move when the machine is doing a rapid movement. And right now our setting is 10,000 on that, and I'm gonna change those both to 15,000. So we'll say dollar sign 110 equals 15,000. And be very careful about these numbers that you're putting in here. Make sure you're putting in what you wanna put in. An extra zero is a big difference. We'll hit enter, and then I'll put 111, also changing that to 15,000, and we will hit enter again. Now, because I'm running this new Z slider, that's something I'm still kind of trying to get a feel for, and it already is moving quite a bit faster than the uh, belt drive was moving before. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. That would be setting 112 if we were doing that, and the factory setting for that is 1300. So now the last things that I'm gonna change here are settings 120 and 121, which are the acceleration rates. And you have uh, X, Y, and uh, 122 would be Z, but again, I'm not gonna play with anything on that Z axis just yet. So let's go ahead and type dollar sign 120, and the factory setting on that is 500. I'm gonna to go to 1,000. And then we will also do 121. And now what I like to do is I just create a little uh, dome shape. This one here is two and a half inches in diameter and I extruded it to be uh, two and three quarters inches tall. And I just run this program with no material in the machine. You don't even need to have a bit in or anything. Um, and I just like to see what it's doing, how everything sounds. You know, if I'm getting a grinding noise or something coming out of one of the stepper motors, uh, I've probably gone too high, or if it seems like it's just accelerating too fast and, and the machine isn't actually able to keep up with it, I'll start backing stuff down. So again, when you're doing stuff like this, just make gradual changes and do things one at a time to make sure that you're comfortable with it. If you change a whole bunch of stuff, you may not know exactly what's affecting or causing any of your problems. So I hope this helped inform you guys a little bit on how to change some of these settings. Hope you better understand what some of them mean. Like I said, get on GitHub and read through all these things. There's a ton of good information out there. There's probably a lot of things that you didn't even know that you had control over, but we can come into the MDI here and make some changes. Now, some of this stuff is locked down by Carbide 3D, such as your travel for each axis. I believe they have a hard limit set on that, so you couldn't make it bigger. Um, but you could get around that by running something like CNC JS, and that's just an alternative to carbide motion. So thanks for checking the video out. Really appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up on it. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And if you have any ideas for another video, that's how I got the idea for this. Someone left a comment. Uh, just please leave a comment down below, and I'll try to get a video going on that. Big shout out to these guys for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it, and I really couldn't do this without you guys. And I will see everybody over on this next video.